Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night on which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. All times belong to him and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our minds and hearts.
Lumen Christi. Lumen Christi, Ego Gracias. Lumen Christi.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. <clears throat> Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arid with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light. Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he whom I, who might be pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for sake bid Adam set to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass Rishah through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. 
O oh, oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond our telling, to ransom a slave, you give away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is thy night, of which it is written, Thy night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is thy night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing far ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a hat or so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are what to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and limbs and reigns forever and ever. Please extinguish your candles. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people, and in these, the last days, has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption.
reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into a basin and dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate night from day. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the, dome, in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teams and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image 
after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the, of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth in all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the works he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day for all the work he has undertaken. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, 
who are wonderful in the ordering of all your words. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lectura del libro del Génesis. En aquel tiempo, Dios le puso una prueba a Abraham y le dijo, Abraham, Abraham. Él respondió, aquí estoy. Y Dios le dijo, toma a tu hijo único, Isaac, quien tanto amas, vete a la región de Moria y ofrécemelo en sacrificio en el monte que yo te indicaré. Abraham madrugó, aparejó su burro, tomó consigo a dos de sus criados y a su hijo Isaac. Cortó la leña para el sacrificio y se encaminó al lugar que Dios le había indicado. Al tercer día, divisó a lo lejos el lugar. Les dijo entonces a sus criados, Quédense aquí con el burro. Yo iré con el muchacho hasta allá para adorar a Dios y después regresaremos. Abraham tomó la leña para el sacrificio, se la cargó a su hijo Isaac y tomó en su mano el fuego y el cuchillo. Los dos caminaban juntos. Isaac dijo a su padre Abraham, Padre, él respondió, ¿Qué quieres, hijo? El muchacho contestó, ya tenemos fuego y la leña, pero ¿dónde está el cordero para el sacrificio? Abraham le contestó, Dios nos dará el cordero para el sacrificio, hijo mío. Y siguieron caminando juntos. Cuando llegaron al sitio que Dios le había señalado, Abraham levantó un altar y acomodó la leña. Luego ató a su hijo Isaac, lo puso sobre el altar, encima de la leña, y tomó el cuchillo para devorarlo. Pero el ángel del Señor lo llamó desde el cielo y le dijo, Abraham, Abraham. Él contestó, aquí estoy. El ángel le dijo, no descargues la mano contra tu hijo, ni le hagas daño. Ya veo que temes a Dios porque no le has negado a tu hijo único. Abraham levantó los ojos y vio un carnero enredado por los cuernos en la maleza. Atrapó el carnero y lo ofreció en sacrificio en lugar de su hijo. Abraham puso por nombre aquel sitio, el Señor provee. Por lo que aún el día de hoy se dice, el monte donde el Señor provee. El ángel del Señor volvió a llamar a Abraham desde el cielo y le dijo, Juro por mí mismo, dice el Señor, que por haber hecho esto y no haberme negado a tu hijo único, yo te bendeciré y multiplicaré tu descendencia como las estrellas del cielo y las arenas del mar. Tus descendientes conquistarán las ciudades enemigas. En tu descendencia serán bendecidos todos los pueblos de la tierra porque obedeciste a mis palabras. Palabra de Dios.
God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? me. My heart exhorts me even in the night. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence. You will show me the path to Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once useful. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord to me, tell the Israelite to go forward, and you lift up your staff with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelite may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his armies, his chariots and charities. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charities. The angel of God who had been leading the Israel camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took its place behind them. So they came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed with the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea, 
with the strong east wind through the night, and so it turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelite marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to the right and to the left. The Egyptians followed and pursued. All fair horses and chariots and charities went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded with retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots and the charities. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Adam, the sea, flowed back to its normal death. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charities of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelite into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelite had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to the right and to the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sing this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumphant horse and chariot he has cast into the sea.
O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in a spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off says your God. For a brief moment, I abandon you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love should never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, a storm batter and unconsoled, I laid your payments in cornelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and your walls of precious stones. All your children should be taught by the Lord, and great should be the peace of your children. In justice, shall be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction can no come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías Esto dice el Señor Todos ustedes, los que tienen sed, vengan por agua Y los que no tienen dinero, vengan Tomen trigo y coman Tomen vino y leche sin pagar ¿Por qué gastar el dinero en lo que no es pan Y el salario en lo que no alimenta? Escúchenme atentos y comerán bien, saborarán platillos sustanciosos. Préstenme atención, vengan a mí, escúchenme y vivirán. Sellaré con ustedes una alianza perpetua. Cumpliré las promesas que hice a David, como a él puse por testigo ante los pueblos como príncipe y soberano de las naciones. Así, tú reunirás a un pueblo desconocido y las naciones que no te conocían acudirán a ti. Por amor del Señor tu Dios, por el Santo de Israel que te ha honrado. Busquen al Señor mientras lo puedan encontrar. Invóquenlo mientras esté cerca. Que el malvado abandone su camino y el criminal sus planes. Que regrese al Señor y Él tendrá piedad. A nuestro Dios, que es rico en perdón. Mis pensamientos no son los pensamientos de ustedes. Sus caminos no son mis caminos. Porque así como aventajan los cielos a la tierra... Así aventajan mis caminos a los de ustedes y mis pensamientos a sus pensamientos. Como bajan del cielo la lluvia y la nieve y no vuelven allá, sino después de empapar la tierra, de fecundarla y hacerla germinar, a fin de que dé semilla para sembrar y pan para comer. Así será la palabra que sale de mi boca. No volverá a mí sin resultado, sino que hará mi voluntad y cumplirá su misión. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor.
joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where the length of days and life, where the light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the peace, the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her with his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, 
to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O oh God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Dong 发泄我的愤怒这些人原是上主的百姓我做这事在他们眼前显为圣的时候以民就要承认我是上主不主上主的圣言断语我要把你们从异民中领出从各地聚集你们领你们翻回你们的地域那时我要在你们身上洗清水洁净你们净化你们脱离各种不洁和各种偶像我还要赐给你们一颗新的心在你们五内注入一种新的精神从你们身上取去铁石的心给你们换上一颗血肉的心我要将我的神使你们遵守我的规律 The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
the face of God. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. A multitude keeping festival with glad shouts and songs Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both Testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mysteries, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
O God, who make this most sacred night radiance with, radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized with Christ Jesus were baptized in his, into death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too, might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like this, we shall also be united with him in resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be enslaved to, to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. Are for his, as for his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most Reverend Father, I bring to you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia. Oh. Uh -huh. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. 
but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Just last week, well, it was the beginning of last week, so almost two weeks ago now, I took part in an organized uh, visit for bishops to the civil rights sites in the state of Alabama. It was organized by our Bishops' Conference for the United States. There were just a few of us there, but we saw where the famous march from Selma to Montgomery took place. We saw sites where the most horrendous acts of violence against African Americans took place, including the infamous Bloody Sunday. And we heard from people who were involved in the effort. We also learned about Catholic participation in the effort, not only in terms of public manifestations, but also in giving comfort and aid and refuge to those suffering violence and intimidation. In particular, St. Jude Parish, is located just a few blocks from the state capitol that was the destination of the march. And they provided a place of refuge, comfort, and protection for those taking part in the march. It was a real center and a hub. I will never forget a story recounted to us by the pastor of that parish, the pastor now. He told us of an African-American woman who took part in the struggle and experienced the oppression of the society and government at the time. This was, of course, while George Wallace was the governor of Alabama. He said, many years later, this would be in the 1980s or 1990s, the woman was in the same building as the former governor who had been there for another purpose. She was waiting at the elevator, and when the doors opened, there was Governor Wallace, now sitting in his wheelchair, surrounded by Secret Service agents. What to do? Went on. She stepped inside the elevator, and when the doors closed, she took the governor's hand, looked into his eyes, and said, I want you to know that I love you, and I forgive you for all that you did. He then went on to say that Governor Wallace, now former governor, he would not let go of her hand, and tears visibly welled up in his eyes. Someone in our group asked a question about how young people respond to all of this. The pastor replied by saying that when they come and visit the sites there, there is visible anger, but it is an ill-defined anger as if unclear to whom it is directed. He recounted that in one visit of university students, when he told this story, a young woman remarked, she should never have done that. He was an evil man and did not deserve that. Looking at these two contrasting examples, I ask you, 
Which of these two women is truly free? The struggle to journey from slavery to freedom is very much what this night is about. The story began long ago with the people chosen by God who were being held as slaves in Egypt. We heard about their dramatic deliverance from that slavery tonight in the third reading for this Easter Vigil Liturgy. The moment had finally arrived in God's time. Yes, the people have been pleading with him for 430 years, but as God's plan, this was now the right time. He raised up Moses to lead the people to freedom. But for what? What does Moses tell Pharaoh when he and Aaron appear before him to insist that he let God's people go? His words are recorded earlier in the book of Exodus. The God of the Hebrews has come to meet us. Let us go a three days journey in the wilderness that we may offer sacrifice to the Lord our God. That makes it clear. Freedom is for the purpose of worshiping God, the one true God, the God of Israel. The problem is the people of Israel kept reverting to slavery, beginning at the very moment of their deliverance from slavery, and they did so all throughout their history. That is, they did not trust that God was really guiding them through that desert wilderness to a land flowing with milk and honey. And even after they arrived there, they envied their powerful pagan neighbors. And so they made covenants with them and worshiped their idols rather than maintain fidelity to the God who had made a covenant with them. The deal was that they would worship him and him alone and they would obey his law and he would watch over them, protect them, and make them prosper. They did not hold up their end of the deal. And even though God held up his anyway, it came at a high cost for his people. Actually, things are not that much different today. It all comes down to the same problem, a lack of trust. And this is based on a serious misunderstanding of freedom in our own time. The late Pope Benedict XVI taught extensively on this, particularly in his widely read Jesus of Nazareth trilogy. He says there, through sin, opposition takes the place of synergy. Man, whose will attains fulfillment through becoming attuned to God's will, now comes to a sense that his freedom is compromised by God's will. He regards consenting to God's will not as his opportunity to become fully himself, but as a threat to his freedom against which he rebels. So it's the same thing, a lack of trust in God, that what he teaches is the true way to authentic freedom and lasting happiness. The inevitable result is turning something else into God, such as our own will. In other words, idolatry, idolatry, something also not escaping Pope Benedict's notice. As he says elsewhere, it is evident that the unlimited arbitrariness of the ability to do all has an idol at its, as its model and not God. Then this then starts a vicious cycle. It begins with the sin of lack of trust and then drags the human person down ever deeper into sin, which is the very opposite of freedom. Sin is the true slavery. True freedom is worshiping the true God. And what do we call the action by which we come together to worship God? A service. We speak of a worship service. It is service that is the hallmark of true freedom. On this point, Pope Benedict cites our very own patron saint as the model of authentic freedom. He says, for Francis of Assisi, this extreme humility was above all freedom for service, freedom for mission, ultimate trust in God. To arrive at true freedom as a disciple of Jesus Christ, though, will always involve a crucifixion of some sort or another. 
It necessarily means dying to sin, which is the very meaning of our baptism. We see this reflected in an ancient formula for the blessing of baptismal water. Sanctify this water so that those who are baptized may be crucified with Christ, die with him, be buried with him, and rise again for adoption. Yes, it will involve a crucifixion. Think of that extreme humility of St. Francis. Think again about the woman who forgave Governor Wallace. Think of the crucifixion she went through, suffering all of the oppression and racial violence growing up in the Jim Crow South, the violence and resistance to the campaign for civil rights, her own inner struggle to come to the point where she could forgive the man who was ultimately responsible for it all. This too is the service of the worship of God. This is the Christian way, dying to sin so as to rise with Christ to the glory of a new life. That means living in a serious way the sacrament of our baptism and not letting it be simply an empty ritual. We rejoice tonight that many of our brothers and sisters will enter into this mystery. They will be immersed in the font, the ancient sign of their death with Christ, walking down into the font as a sign of their going into the tomb with him, then being immersed under the water to signify their being buried with him, and then rising out of the font and clothed with the white garment to show that they have put on Christ and share the glory of his resurrection. St. Cyril of Jerusalem, the fourth century bishop of that holy city, stated it well to a group of newly baptized in his famous Jerusalem Catechesis. When you were immersed in the water, it was like night for you, and you could not see. But when you rose again, it was like coming into broad daylight. In the same instant, you died and were born again. The saving water was both your tomb and your mother. That death and rebirth involves both a no to sin and a yes to Christ. And so their immersion into the saving waters of baptism will be preceded by an analogous renunciation of sin and profession of faith. In doing so, they will follow an ancient practice of the church to symbolize what this means. They will face west to renounce sin and the devil because the west is the place of darkness since it is the last place where the rays of the rising sun reach. Then they will turn toward the east for their profession of faith, east being the place of light, as the rising sun reminds us of Jesus rising from the dead, dispelling the darkness of sin and death, and casting upon us his healing rays and enlightening us with his truth. East also re is representative of heaven, as when God created the heavens and the earth, he put the garden in the east. Ultimately, what this accomplishes is a restoration. Sin damages the image of God in which we were originally created, and baptism restores it. That is, it restores it when its meaning is lived out in the life of the believer. This, then, is the restoration of our human dignity which derives from that image of God in which we were created. The Second Vatican Council's pastoral constitution on the church in the modern world teaches this quite clearly. It says, authentic freedom is an exceptional sign of the divine image within man. Man's dignity demands that he act according to a knowing and free choice that is personally motivated and prompted from within not under blind internal impulse, nor by mere external pressure. Man achieves such dignity when, emancipating himself from all captivity to passion, he pursues his goal in a spontaneous choice of what is good. Since man's freedom has been damaged by sin, only by the aid of God's grace can he bring such a relationship with God into full flower. Let us now go back one last time to that scene to which I have been referring. 
I said that that woman's act of forgiveness of the man responsible for her suffering was an act of worship of God. It was the worship of God because it was service to God, the service that changes hearts. We hear a lot of rhetoric about changing hearts, but this incident proves how hard it can be for that to happen because it is only love that can do that. And only God's grace can make that happen. Only His grace can bring to full flower a just relationship with Him and thereby rightly ordered relationships with one another. And because of that, Governor Wallace himself must have gone through his own inner crucifixion. He manifested visible signs of a change of heart, clearly showing his regret and remorse for what he had done. Here we see true freedom, peace and goodwill, and how a society can truly flourish. It is simply living a life of the worship of God as he has revealed to us in his Son. Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? asked the women who went to anoint the body of Jesus. The stone was large, St. Mark tells us, too large for human strength to move it. That could only be accomplished by an act of God, by God's grace. The stone sealed the entrance to the tomb and God rolled it away so the women who came to do a service for him could be the first ones to encounter the risen Christ. What about the stone that seals the entrance to our own heart? Likewise, only God can roll that away so that we can know the true freedom of serving him and so come to the saving encounter with his risen son. Let us then trust him to do that. Trust him enough to follow his commandments, which are nothing other than instructions for living in freedom and true happiness. Let us do so, so that what we prayed moments ago after the joyful singing of the Gloria, when the bells were rung for the first time after having been silenced since the singing of the Gloria on Holy Thursday, that this prayer may come to pass for us. May this be the prayer that tonight reminds us to live every day of our lives. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Amen. Now, if you allow me, please, a few, uh, few more minutes to give a summary of the homily for our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters with us. Nuestra adoración en esta vigilia pascual es una celebración gozosa de la liberación de la esclavitud a la libertad. Comenzó hace mucho tiempo con el pueblo elegido por Dios, un pueblo de esclavos en Egipto. Esta noche, en la tercera lectura de la vigilia pascual, Escuchamos acerca de su dramática liberación de esa esclavitud. Moisés le había dicho al faraón que dejara ir al pueblo de Dios, pero ¿con qué propósito? Le insiste Moisés al faraón, el Dios de los hebreos nos ha salido al encuentro. Tenemos que hacer un viaje de tres días por el desierto para ofrecer sacrificios al Señor nuestro Dios. El propósito de la libertad, entonces, es adorar a Dios, el Dios único y verdadero. El problema es que tenemos una tendencia humana de volver a la esclavitud. Para los antiguos israelitas, esto significaba una falta de confianza en que Dios realmente los estaba guiando y les estaba proveyendo durante todos los, esos años que deambulaban por el desierto de, del Sinaí en busca de la tierra prometida. E incluso después de que entraron y tomaron posesión de ella, todavía dudaron de él, hicieron pactos con sus vecinos poderosos y veganos y así adoraron a sus ídolos. Pero en realidad, las cosas no son muy diferentes hoy en día. 
De la misma manera, a veces nosotros también experimentamos una falta de confianza en Dios y por lo tanto convertimos algo que no es Dios real en nuestro propio Dios falso y terminamos idolatrando realidades egoístas como nuestra propia voluntad. De ahí la falta de confianza en que Dios nos enseña el verdadero camino hacia la auténtica libertad y la felicidad duradera. La verdadera libertad es libertad para servir, servir a Dios en nuestra adoración a Él y solo a Él, y servirnos los unos a los otros compartiendo su amor y bondad. Este es el camino cristiano, que no es otra cosa que vivir el significado de nuestro bautismo. Nos regocijamos esta noche con nuestros hermanos que se unirán a Cristo en este misterio, siendo sumergidos en las aguas salvadoras del bautismo para mostrar su muerte con Él y luego saliendo de la fuente bautismal para mostrar su unión con Él en su resurrección. Y esto irá precedido de la renuncia al pecado y de la profesión de fe. Significado mismo de vivir este compromiso bautismal. Pero hay un detalle muy importante que recordar. ¿Quién nos quitará la piedra de la entrada del sepulcro? Preguntaron las mujeres que fueron a ungir el cuerpo de Jesús. La piedra era grande, nos dice San Marcos. Demasiado grande para que la fuerza humana pudiera moverla. Esto solo podía, podría lograrse mediante un acto de Dios, por la gracia de Dios. La piedra selló la entrada a la tumba y Dios la quitó para que las mujeres que vinieron a hacerle un servicio pudieran ser las primeras en encontrarse con Cristo resucitado. ¿Qué pasa con la piedra que sea la entrada en nuestro propio corazón? De la misma manera, solo Dios puede mover eso para que podamos conocer la verdadera libertad de servirle y así llegar al encuentro salvador con su hijo, con su hijo, con su hijo, su hijo resucitado. Confiemos entonces en Él para hacer eso. Confiemos en Él lo suficiente como para seguir sus mandamientos, que no son más que instrucciones para vivir en libertad y verdadera felicidad. Hagámoslo para que se cumpla en nosotros lo que rezamos hace unos momentos después del canto gozoso del gloria cuando fueron tocadas por primera vez las campanas después de haber estado en silencio desde el canto del gloria el jueves santo. Que esta sea la oración que esta noche nos recuerde vivir cada día de nuestra vida. Dios nuestro, que haces resplandecer esta noche con la gloria de la resurrección del Señor, aviva en tu iglesia el espíritu de, ad, de abducción filial, para que, renovados en cuerpo y alma, nos entreguemos fielmente a tu servicio. Amén. Candidates for baptism, please stand together with your godparents as your names are called. Angelina Pantoja, Angie Chan, 
Ashley Renee Lezot, Brianna Laval, Esmeralda Ukon, Jordan Flores, Juliana Ezella Ossession, no, Ossession. Micah Luchel Bell, Nora Barton, Andy Chan, Anthony Enrique Arguello, Donald Reynolds, Henry Dominguez Chan, Jeremiah David Maza, Espinosa, Julian Serrano, Sang Hun Chion, Zolt Robert Anderson, Please stand.
response to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble servants may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shot through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through, through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this form. So that 
all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Catechumens, I ask you, renuncian ustedes a Satanás? Do you reject Satan? Yet todas sus obras and all his works. Yet todas sus seducciones and all his empty promises. Angelina. anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Angie. Te ungimos con el óleo de la salvación en el nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador. Que Él te fortalezca con su poder, que vive reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. <coughs> Ashley René. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May He strengthen you with His power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Brianna. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Esmeralda Marianela. Te ungimos con el óleo de la salvación en el nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador, que te fortalezca con su poder, que vive reina por los siglos de los siglos. Jordan. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Juliana Isela. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Micah, la Shev. Nora. We anoint you with the oil of salvation. In the name of Christ our Savior, may he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever. Andy. Te ungimos con el óleo de la salvación. En el nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador, que él te fortalezca con su poder y te reina por los siglos de los siglos. Anthony Enriquez. Te ungimos con el óleo de la salvación. En nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador. Que él te fortalezca con su poder. Que viva reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Donald. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Henry. Te unimos con el óleo de la salvación en el nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador. Que te fortalezca con su poder. Que vive reina por los siglos de los siglos. Jeremiah David. Te ungimos con el óleo de la salvación en el nombre de Cristo nuestro Salvador. Que te fortalezca con su poder que vive reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. Julián. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Sang Hun. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Zolt Robert. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Angelina, Angie, Ashley, Renee, Brianna, Esmeralda, Marianela, Jordan, Juliana, Isela, Nora, Andy, Anthony, Enrique, Donald, Henry, Jeremiah, David, Julian, Sang Hoon, Zolt, Robert. Crees en Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Crees en Jesucristo, su Hijo único, nuestro Señor, que nació de Santa María Virgen, murió, fue sepultado, resucitó de entre los muertos, y está sentado a la derecha del Padre? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Crees en el Espíritu Santo, en la Santa Iglesia Católica, en la comunión de los santos, en el perdón de los pecados, en la resurrección de la carne, en la vida eterna? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Angelina, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Te bautizo en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Ashley Renee, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Brianna, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Esmeralda Marinela, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Jordan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Juliana Isela, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Nora, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Andy, I, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Anthony Enrique, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Don, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Henry, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Jeremiah David, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Robert, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Godparents, please come forward to give the newly baptized the light of Christ. Acérquense, padrinos, para que entreguen a los recién bautizados la luz de Cristo. Angelina, Angie, Ashley, Renee, Brianna, Esmeralda, Marianela, Jordan, Juliana, Isela, Nora, Andy, Anthony, Enrique, Donald, Henry, Jeremiah, David, Julian, Sang Hoon, and Zolt Robert. Ustedes han sido transformados en nuevas criaturas. You have become a new creation. And have clothed yourselves in Christ, Receive this baptismal garment, and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may have everlasting life. Ustedes están revestidos de Cristo, reciban pues la vestidura bautismal que han de llevar limpia de mancha ante el tribunal de nuestro Señor Jesucristo para alcanzar la vida eterna. Amen. And now, Godparents, please come forward to give the newly baptized the light of Christ. Acérquense, padrinos, para que entreguen a los recién bautizados la luz de Cristo. You have been enlightened by Christ. Ustedes han sido iluminados por Cristo. Caminen siempre como hijos de la luz y guarden la llama de la fe viva en su corazón a fin de que puedan salir al encuentro del Señor cuando venga con todos los santos en la gloria celestial. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his empty works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do, do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may not have mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us in his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
Would the candidates for confirmation please stand? Everyone else may be seated. Alex Cruz, Christian Corneo, Christian Rodriguez, Dante Cormi, Darren Dijon, Ernesto Yahir Leon Ortiz, Giovanni Hernandez, Jake Kaufman, Jacob Lay, Jonathan Tristan Allen Acoba, Jonathan Vasquez, June Francisco Arteza Acoba, Justino Alexander Lavado Acoba, Logan Gutierrez, Matthew Hafilia, Hafalia, Michael Gerard Putz, Owe Angeles, Patrick Sistero, Roberto Guerrero, Trevor Kaufman, Adriandra Lucia Imancha, Catalina Gomez, Cristina Angelina, Yvonne Hernandez, Jennifer Chan, Jennifer Nicole Cazares, Juliana Romano Campos, Ruby Rose Moiron Junio, Stephanie Osorio and Vanessa Gorozaga. Archbishop Cordelione, the communities of the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Assumption and Archbishop Reardon High School wish to present to you its men and women who have been prepared and are ready to complete the process of Christian initiation by receiving the sacrament of confirmation. Each candidate has prepared for this sacrament over a period of 12 months. During this time, they have participated in a retreat and have individually expressed their desire to be active members of the church their sponsors and their teachers, together with the whole community, attest to their readiness and are happy to present them to you at this time as candidates for confirmation. Could the newly baptized and their godparents please rise? Please extinguish your candles. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to the baptized. Mis queridos candidatos para la confirmación, por su bautismo han sido regenerados en Cristo y transformados en miembros suyos y de su pueblo sacerdotal. Ahora van a recibir al Espíritu Santo que ha sido derramado, derramado sobre nosotros. Es el mismo Espíritu que envió el Señor 
sobre los apóstoles en Pentecostés y que ellos y sus sucesores confieran en los bautizados. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. La prometida fuerza del Espíritu Santo que van a recibir los configurará más con Cristo y les ayud ayudará a ser testigos de su sufrimiento, muerte y resurrección. Él los fortalece, fortalecerá para ser miembros activos de la iglesia y edificar el cuerpo de Cristo en la fe y el amor. And so I ask you now to renew those promises of baptism. Those of you candidates for confirmation who have come here already baptized and now presenting yourselves for confirmation, I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Renuncien ustedes a Satanás y a todas sus obras y seducciones. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Creen ustedes en Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, creador del cielo y de la tierra. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Creen en Jesucristo, su Hijo único y Señor nuestro, que nació de Santa María, padeció y murió por nosotros, resucitó, y está sentado a la derecha del Padre. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Creen en el Espíritu Santo, Señor, dador de vida, que hoy les va a ser comunicado de un modo singular por el sacramento de la confirmación, como fue dado a los apóstoles el día de Pentecostés. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Creen en la Santa Iglesia Católica, en la comunión de los santos, en el perdón de los pecados, en la resurrección de los muertos, y en la vida eterna. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, O Lord. Esta es nuestra fe. Esta es la fe de la Iglesia que nos gloriamos de profesar en Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord.
Dear brothers and sisters, on this holy night when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we were restored to a life of grace. With hearts full of joy and thanksgiving, let us now present our petitions to the Father. For the Church, that the risen Christ will strengthen and guide her as a beacon of hope and of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders, that they be mindful of the dignity of all people, especially the unborn, and that they lead with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those baptized, confirmed, or received into full communion with the Church on this night, that they may continue to grow in faith and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for ourselves gathered here, that we may come to share in the transforming power of the resurrection in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health of all the sick and for those in need of prayer, that they be consoled by Christ, who is always merciful to those who trust and hope in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the faithful departed, that Christ, the just and merciful judge, may grant their soul a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this holy mass and for the people of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, your Son, we ask you to strengthen us in faith so that we may proclaim the pardon and peace you have given us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, our unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. 
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, 
Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divini institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, piat voluntas tua, Sicud in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum na nobis horie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostri, Et ne nos inducas in tentazione, sed libera nos amado. Libera nos quesimus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris. Utope misericordiae tu aiuti, et a peccatos simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui atum est reliem et potestas, et gloria in secula. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite properly disposed Catholics to come forward to receive Holy Communion, and others present this evening are invited to join in prayer. The standard procedure for receiving communion in the United States is to stand. If you prefer kneeling to receive the Eucharist, please use the kneelers which will be provided. Thank you.
The second collection is for the cathedral's music department. If you wish to make an offering, the ushers will come and collect it from you now. Thank you. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The concert tomorrow features Polish organist Michal Szostak. His concert is at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. All are invited to attend. On this coming Wednesday, April 3rd, the cathedral will host a Latin low mass, the first Wednesday of every month, in the Extraordinary Rite at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday. And immediately following this mass, the archbishop will be downstairs in hall, uh, the St. Francis Hall to take pictures with the newly baptized and the confirmandes. So please go down there immediately following the Mass. Thank you. Before we conclude, I wish in the name of the whole Archdiocese to wish you all a very happy Easter and a special congratulations to our newly baptized and newly confirmed and thank you for saying yes to Christ. So many thank yous uh, during this beautiful Holy Week for our uh, staff and volunteers here at the Cathedral beginning with our Pastor and Rector, Father Kevin Kennedy, Father Gerald Geronimo, his assistant. Of course, Father Summer Hayes and residents, our Vicar General always joining us. Uh, Dr. Chris Tietze and all of our musicians and singers, Mimi Ruiz, our cantor, and all the other cantors who have made these um, beautiful services so moving and prayerful. The deacons, the MCs, and all those who have done a lot of work. Obviously, a ceremony like this is very complicated, has a lot of moving parts. There are many details that are not really visible, so thank you to all of you who have worked so hard for the glory of God. May he reward you for your goodness to him and to us. I will uh, greet the people after Mass, so I will not go immediately downstairs. Um, once I finish, I will go downstairs and take one group shot with our newly baptized and confirmed. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalted in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.
go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.